Hi, this is Bob. I uh, have an old Heathkit radio, uh, SS9000, that has uh, programmed EEPROMs in it. These are type 2516 EEPROMs. They're also the same as the Intel 2716 EEPROMs. I picked up this uh, old Stag uh, EEPROM programmer on eBay. When I got it, it didn't work. The cord was cut off. I worked in uh, Bendix repairing equipment and when equipment did not work we would cut the cord off that indicated that it was bad so uh, when I saw this on eBay with the cord cut off I thought yeah it's probably bad but anyways I bought it it has a circuit board inside that covers almost this whole area of the front and it is covered with like hundred and fifty through plated holes so after I repaired all of those through plated holes, the stag started to work. So if you'd like to see how to repair the through plated holes, there's another YouTube video I made on it. Just look for through plated holes. That's T-H-R-U plated holes on the uh, YouTube search box. And you'll find out how I repaired the through plated holes. Anyhow. Uh, this unit has very little information available. I could not find anything. I could not find the manual. I contacted many people all over the country, different companies, and, uh, and also advertised on some of the amateur radio websites, etc. Uh, one gentleman did suggest how to use it, and his suggestions were helpful. I wish I could remember his name. Um, but I played with it and found that it works and I was able to program the EEPROMs that I needed for the old Heathkit radio. Now when I bought this I also bought an EEPROM eraser. Uh, this came from China and uh, it, was, uh, it was very cheap. I think it was $15 on uh, eBay. It worked quite well. The, uh, the uh, dial and the timer are not that accurate. Uh, when I turn it to the number 2 I was thinking 20 minutes. It went about 23 minutes, which wasn't bad, and it erased the EEPROMs nicely. So for my 15 bucks, it did the job. So what I'm going to attempt to do here, you can see I've got it set for 2716. This does just a few types of EEPROMs. It didn't like that. So let's, I was just going to kick it on. There we go. There's, there's 2732 EEPROMs. You have to turn it on each time you change it. 2816 EEPROMs. And I think it does, uh, whoop, that's an error. 1764 EEPROMs. So by changing the ABCD switches and the amount of memory with the other switch over here, you can select what type EEPROMs you have. Now the 2716 Intels, which is the same as the 2516 Ti, are A at the top and 16. So these two switches at the top for those type of EEPROMs. And that's what I needed. This is U807 from the Heathkit SS9000. Okay, and I'm putting it into the 24 pin socket. Right there. And I didn't put it in right. There we go. I had the socket closed already. No wonder it didn't go in right. You know, I think we just make mistakes all the time. The only thing you can do is your attitude. You make a mistake, you just do it over again. Having patience and, and uh, persistence are the two greatest skills you can have when working on electronics. Okay, we got it set up for 2716. We got the EEPROM in. Now all we have to do is push the load button, which is right here and boom that quick now you see it says 87 f3 now that's the start of the program so it's loaded so the next thing we do we take this out since we've loaded it into the stag and you know something this is all I know about this stag because I learned how to do this by playing this is the only job I really needed to do with it so uh, this is all I know about it and I'll put the new EEPROM in there. This has been erased in the EEPROM eraser. It's in the socket. It's ready to go and I will push PROG. And you can see the numbers counting down there. That is the program going into the EEPROM. So what we need to do now is just wait till that is completed. 
This is all the information I have on the stag. If anybody has the stag manual, I sure would appreciate getting a, a Xerox copy of it. And I would certainly pay you for your time and your, e and your cost of the mailing uh, to get that, because I'd like to know more about the stag programmer. And it works pretty good. And you will find, too, uh, when you're working on this kind of equipment, if it has through plated holes on the circuit board, a lot of times you can get the equipment working just by repairing the through plated holes because they had trouble with those holes back in the 80s when these things were made. So that is a really good way to get equipment going and then one of the first things I do on equipment uh, or amateur radio equipment for that fact too. Heathkit had a lot of trouble with through plated holes. I bought a really nice Heathkit frequency counter at a ham fest. Very cheap and uh, the guy that sold it to me was a Heathkit engineer uh, that I had worked with and he told me, he says, well, he said, fix the through plated holes and you'll probably have a good counter. He didn't want to take the time. So I fixed the through plated holes and it's been on my workbench over there for probably 25 years, uh, working just fine. So uh, the through plated holes, in my opinion, are kind of a, kind of a poor way of uh, replacing jumpers on a circuit board and uh, can cause a lot of trouble. As you can see, that it takes a little bit to, uh, to copy an EEPROM on the STAG. And this is a STAG PP28, as you can see on the front of it there. There, it says pass. That means that it has completed and it's passed, it's ready to go. So there's a verify button around here. I don't know if that's gonna do anything or not. And it passed that. It scans really fast, so when you push the verify and it scans, and it does it just super fast. So when it says pass, that means it's done. So that's the whole thing, just a couple of button pushes, and we've got ourselves a newly programmed 2516 or 2716 EEPROM. And this is the STAG EEPROM programmer. I, like I say, I sure wish I knew more about it. So that's it guys, 73's and good DX.